Well, I think one of the great things about this record is that it's not just a, you know, a, a memorial to, to Les Paul. Because each one of these songs, although there are songs that Les Paul and Mary Ford did, there are certainly many songs that were, were taken on and brought in and uh, recorded and sung in the style of Les Paul, which is which was, makes it so interesting. And one of those songs that I find so intriguing is uh, the Mae West song, sung from, what was the name of the movie? Uh, um, Klondike Annie or something yes, like that. Yes, it I is think, something like know? Klondike, uh, and, and it was... Uh, the name of the song is Occidental... What's the exact title? It's a little I guess the real title is I'm an Occidental Woman in an Oriental Mood for Love. We just shortened it to Occidental Woman. But uh, it seems to grab everybody. And now that is a thing that's... That's really special. It's a it's a tune that's... It really is a blues tune. I mean, it's got more changes than a 145 blues, but but it is a blues tune in vibe and feeling. And she's singing about, you know an oriental mood and the Buddha moon, moon above and, and those things like the the uh, imagery in that song and there's only one verse Sonny sang it three times and, and changed it each time but there's only one verse and it's so good you don't mind hearing it over and over it's just uh, got a feeling to it that you know not many people write today in fact I, I was thinking today about there's never been another song like that, an Oriental blues, and then I thought of Tom Waits' Shore Leave, oh, yes. which is uh, he's he goes to Singapore and he's you know he goes out and he's you know meets these people out on his shore leave and you know drinks Singapore slings with them and gets in trouble and whatever and misses his woman and anyway you know Tom Waits could appreciate this album. In oh, fact, right. I'm going to send him a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and the, the classic uh, footage of Mary, of uh, of uh, May West. May West actually doing the, from the movie is actually if you go on YouTube, you can you can see the original clip of her, and it's just fascinating to see. Fascinating. You know, it is really fascinating, and I was so fascinated by the song that I couldn't record it without a gong. So I had uh, my friend, the great drummer Marty Richards, uh, taught at a teaches at a school that has a gong. So I gave him a little digital recorder and he went to school and he hit the gong four times, gave me four different sounds with it, four different, hit it four different ways and brought it back to me and I, I put it on my machine here and that's the intro and the outro of the song is the gong and it just can't exist without a gong. In fact, I, I've taken the gong track and put it on a CD so when I play it live, when we play it live I can actually put it on a on a ghetto blaster and hit it and that'll be the first sound as I just can't play that song without a gong. <laughs> <laughs> well that's just part of the fun of this record and certainly uh, to listen to this record as well as even just hearing about how this music is made the first thing I want to do is get a nice cocktail with a with, a, with an umbrella on it. We're gonna to have, have to umbrella. do that pretty soon. Let me uh, show you a few of the guitars that I used on here. Of course when it comes to Les Pauls uh, I have two. This is my main Les Paul these days, which is a, um, a 57 reissue that I've kind of hot rotted a bit and tried a lot of different pickups till I got the right combination. And uh, this is the predominant guitar on a lot of the tunes. And then I have uh, over here another Les Paul 56 reissue that has the, uh, the, the P90s in it. And um, I actually put Lindy Fraylin for guitar heads out there. Lindy Fraylin uh, has these uh, hum canceling P90s that I put in here for the recording because I was having problems with 60 cycle hum, which I don't know how less avoided that, but could be just electricity in my house. Um, and this is like the the early Les Pauls that uh, we use for his recordings. I use this on Bye Bye Blues, so I would uh, really try to you know, get as close as possible to his sound. All right, Duke, what do you have there that does not look like a Les Paul? <laughs> this, uh, I use this on Occidental Woman. It's kind of buried in the back, but if you listen close, you'll hear it. Uh, this is a 1930s Maybell tenor banjo. And, um, you know, in early jazz, before they used guitar, because banjo had so much more volume, uh, banjo, tenor banjo, four-string banjo, was used as a rhythm instrument. 
Um, and I have to admit, I cheat with it. I have it tuned like the top four strings of a guitar, but uh, that this is on the uh, Occidental Woman. <laughs> I'm not much of a banjo player. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, one of the instruments. And what do we have here? It looks like a priceless artifact from... This is uh, a very cool instrument. In fact, it's one of my favorite guitars. This is a 1930s uh, K Deluxe. It's an arch-topped guitar with a round sound hole. And I believe it's entirely made out of birch, I think. Not positive, but it seems to have that tone. And it's got a sound that almost mimics a national, an old cheap national resonator. It's got a very unique sound, uh, like what we used on, uh, for the intro to the guitar part on Occidental Woman. and unique kind of weird woody tone and this guitar for guitar aficionados has a neck that you can take off if you look close at this the neck uh, has this um, this piece that uh, has a, uh, a like a tongue and groove thing in it and it fits to this this piece to the body and then inside there's um, a wing nut you tighten it with a wing nut, and you can raise or lower the uh, the height of the neck, which will give you a different sound, more volume. So it's a very unique thing. And actually, this technique of guitar making really makes a lot of sense. And somebody should try doing this again today. This is one of my favorite instruments. So, Duke, I have a question for you. How does recording a solo live differ from you approaching it as you're recording on a record per se how does your approach to record to playing live I should say as as different from you recording a solo on record well it, it different parts of my career it, it there were different ways I approached it now I try to get something live all the time and almost always my best takes at solos are my first or second try occasionally my third once I start developing an idea, then it becomes much too thought out. And um, so most of the solos on this record really are spontaneous, and they are on all my records now. Um, it, it, you know, I'll, I'll do a spontaneous solo, and there may be a part that's a little out of time or something that I don't like, a little thing that I'll, I'd rather fix a, a real solo. If there was one little thing off, then then go over things for hours and hours and hours, which I used to do. And I realized that since I gave up that trying to make perfect solos and build them by doing multiple takes and putting things together, it appears to me that that people pick up on the the live vibe of doing a solo. I mean, I'm not saying I don't overdub, but when I do, I try to make it live. I try to make it, you know, I just go for it. And uh, occasionally that doesn't work, but usually it does. And sometimes if I don't get a solo on the first few takes on the first day, then I'll come back again and do it another day, which on this album I did a few times where I tried things and I just wasn't getting the feeling and I could have spent hours laboring over a solo and getting something technically perfect, but I prefer to just come back fresh and just go for it, hit it. If you're ever feeling somewhat stale putting a solo down on, on a record, what is the first thing you try to do? Change the guitar? Change the uh, atmosphere of the room? Uh, what would be some idea, some way of getting first a First thing approach? I would do would try it on a different instrument, in a different sound, because that I am affected by sound. If that doesn't work, I'd have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> or buy a new guitar. Or buy a new, well, I'm trying to curb that. Trying to curb that habit. <laughs> I'm getting a little old for that. <laughs>